Hi students, today we will talk about appendicitis. For that to understand, you should know what is appendix. Appendix is a vestigial organ of human body. Vestigial means something that has no function. So appendix being vestigial organ technically has no function. Appendix is a tube-like structure that branches off where the large intestine or so-called colon begins. It's pencil thin and has length of 10 cm. Now coming back to appendicitis, as you might know, itis means inflammation. So appendicitis becomes inflammation of appendix. Now let's understand why appendix is getting inflamed. The most common cause of appendicitis is lymphoid tissue hyperplasia in about 60% of patients. And second most common cause is fecolip in about 30% of the patients. So let's say 10 patients with appendicitis comes to you. Out of them, 6 will have lymphoid tissue hyperplasia and 3 will be having fecolids. Other causes may include number 1, foreign bodies, number 2, infections, for example, parasitic infections, number 3, neoplasias like carcinoid tumor and adenocarcinomas. Now let's understand lymphoid tissue hyperplasia and fecolid in a detailed manner. Lymphoid tissue is a dense collection of lymphocytes. The lymphoid tissue grow with the age. In appendix, they reach their maximum size in adolescence. Now that's normal physiology. Sometimes when there is hyperplasia of lymphocytes, lymphoid tissue outgrows, which may lead to obstruction of appendix. So, lymphocytes are increasing in number which in turn leads to growth of lymphoid tissue and finally leading to obstruction of appendix and making it inflamed. Now, I want you to take a pause, think carefully and tell me, why do you think obstruction is leading to inflammation? Well, I'm going to talk about fecolith first and then I'll get back to this question. Please remember, Fecolids are the common cause of appendicitis in elderly patients. Fecolith is hardened fecal matter. As you know, appendix is a hollow tube, so fecolith may find its way to appendix and obstruct it. Now again, obstruction is leading to inflammation. Now coming back to the question. I asked you, why do you think that obstruction of appendix is leading to inflammation of appendix? Now I need your 100% attention. Please listen to me very, very carefully. Please understand, intestinal lumen, including the appendix, is always secreting mucus and fluids from its mucosa, generally to keep it moist and to prevent pathogens from entering the bloodstream. Now appendix is getting obstructed, so the secretions are still and becoming thick and infectious. Please understand, now the secretions are not just fluid and mucus. They have become purulent and infectious, which then leads to inflammation of appendix. Since appendix is inflamed now, signs of inflammation should automatically come into your mind. Ruber, tumor, calor, dollar. So appendix is red, it is hot, it has grown in size and it is causing severe pain. Now by this information, tell me, how patient will present to you? Very right, patient will present with pain. But where is the pain? In right lower quadrant. Why the pain is in right lower quadrant? Because that is the location of appendix. Please remember, if the pain is at Mac Burney's point, it is most likely to be appendicitis. Now what is Mac Burney's point? Mac Bunny's point is location of appendix. To localize Mac Bunny's point, you have to take distance from umbilicus to right anterior superior iliac spine. Two third of it from umbilicus is your Mac Bunny's point. So now a patient is coming to you with right lower quadrant pain along with nausea. Patient may vomit also or patient may present with fever also. How are you going to investigate, diagnose and manage this patient? See, the right lower quadrant pain experienced by patient with appendicitis most often occurs at Mac Bunny's point as I told you. 
In addition to right lower quadrant pain, patient has rebound tenderness, which means you apply pressure on McBurney's point and on removal of pressure, patient will scream, patient will have severe pain. So right lower quadrant pain plus rebound tenderness. In addition to this, three classical signs are often seen. Those are Rofsing signs, psoas sign and obturator sign. Always remember, diagnosis of acute appendicitis is based on a thorough clinical assessment as imaging studies and laboratory finding can only support a diagnosis. Now, after clinically assessing patient, doctor first orders routine tests like complete blood picture and complete urine examination, etc. Now, in complete blood picture, you notice that total leukocyte count of patient is flaring up. Patient has leukocytosis. For that matter, you should know what is normal leukocyte count. 4000 to 10,000 is normal leukocyte count. So, any number greater than this is leukocytosis. Kindly remember, patient with right lower quadrant pain and rebound tenderness showing leukocytosis means appendicitis. Now, you are sure that this is appendicitis. You go and explain attenders that see, I am doctor and I have diagnosed patient has appendicitis and he has to undergo surgery. But attender says, Dr. Look, you told appendix is located at McBurney's point, which is two third from umbilicus. But I remember the pain started at periumbilical region. So I think this is gastritis. Now, here don't get confused. Sometimes in appendicitis, pain may arise from periumbilical region and may go to right lower quadrant. But in order to confirm the diagnosis, you have to do imaging studies. Please remember to confirm your diagnosis, you order CT scan. Since CT is little expensive than ultrasound, you can order ultrasound. But problem is sometimes you may miss appendicitis in ultrasound. Then eventually you have to advise CT scan. So here all I am trying to tell you is CT scan is the diagnostic test of choice in patients with suspected appendicitis as it is most sensitive and specific imaging modality. Imaging will reveal thickened enhancing walls, periappendicial inflammation, including fat stranding and a dilated appendicial lumen, more than 6 mm in diameter. Now coming to the treatment. What is the treatment for appendicitis? Very right, the definitive treatment of acute appendicitis is appendectomy. Medical management with antibiotics alone is not the standard of care in patients who present with clinical and radiographic findings consistent with appendicitis. In the pediatric population, please understand and remember, in the pediatric population, appendectomy on the day of diagnosis itself is the treatment of choice for unruptured appendicitis. Supportive measures for patients with suspective appendicitis include IV fluids, broad-spectrum antibiotics, electrolyte monitoring. There are several complications that can occur in a patient with appendicitis, including gangrenous perforation and abscess formation. Towards the end, all I want to say is, appendicitis is medical emergency. Please consider appendicitis in any patient with acute atraumatic abdominal pain without prior appendectomy. Thank you so much for watching this video.